right, everybody. It's game preview time. Ravens versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's get to it. All right, before I give my predictions, my thoughts, everything that's going on, hit that, please. If you're not already, hit that. Hit that subscribe. For your boy, show some support. Also, hit the like as well. So, Ravens versus Steelers, best rivalry in the game, period. There is no better rivalry than this. The hard hits slow down a little bit, but they're still there. Big Ben versus Lamar, or should I say Big Ben versus the Ravens defense, Lamar versus the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. It's going to be a great, great game. Both of the offenses, surprisingly, well, I say Pittsburgh offense, surprisingly, it's not high. It's not very high, 23rd or 24th overall. And Big Ben threw some picks last week. I know he's going to throw some picks in this game right here. He's going to throw some picks in this game right here because our DBs is too good. I'm expecting Marlon Humphrey to make a fumble. Call someone to get a fumble. Now, it would be funny if he gets Juju again. That would be funny. So, if that happens, I'm going to be rolling on my on my reactions. But the defense. Pittsburgh's defense. They're number one overall. Ravens are number five overall. It's going to be... Uh, I'm expecting to see T.J. Watt hit Lamar almost every single play like he did RG3. The time RG3 owned him last, the last time we played him, 2018, but I got beat by second and third strings. But it's going to be Big Ben time because we didn't play Big Ben last year. Big Ben saying he's feeling healthy. He's feeling like when he was a rookie. And so far, he's he's not playing that good like he was as a rookie, but he is playing good. Uh, we can, they got Claypool and Juju and Washington, and they got, they're got loaded. They are loaded. It's going to be interesting. I really want to see who's going to be sticking on Claypool. I believe it's going to be Jimmy Smith. I believe they're going to have Juju and uh, Marlon go at it once again. And Washington with my boy MP Juice Man. That is going to be interesting right there. That that fight they're going to have right there is going to be interesting. Because MP Juice Man, he loves to bait. But then his bait sometimes will turn to a pick six. And I believe that is going to happen this Sunday. It should be Sunday night, but they still has not changed the time for some crazy reason. But I'm just rambling right now. So let me get to my predicaments. Lamar Jackson, I believe they're going to let him loose now. Been a bye week. This game is very important. It's time to go ahead and let Lamar dude lamar they've been hand greg roman been handcuffing this dude and everybody sees it he's actually they showed us the stats he's actually doing better this year than he was last year in certain categories but i believe he can do so much better if they just let him do his thing let him run a little more. Uh, give Gus the ball, which I believe um, they had Ingram on the injury report for his ankle. To me, I believe they should sit him out and let Gus and JK do it. Do their thing. Because we don't need anybody for as Ingram running the ball with a hurt ankle. 
And we already been through that with the Tennessee Titans game last year when he was hurt and they still try to give him the ball. He had to go out, which they still should have fed Gus. But hopefully Gus will get fed a lot this game and JK will get fed a lot. Now, for as the tight ends, I believe Mark Andrews, he's going he's gonna to keep coming up and up and up. At first, they were doubling him. I believe that might happen as well. But the thing about that is I've seen in the um, Tennessee game, one weakness Pittsburgh still has is that deep ball. They can get done in with that deep ball. And that is chance for Hollywood and Duvernay. Dev, Dev Duvernay to do his thing. Because the snaps and snaps been getting higher for Dev and Duvernay. And I, I, I know we just signed Dez Bryant. I will put him out there still. I will still put him out there. Just because I know he just arrived and practiced and everything, but I will still put him out there because just in case Boykin is not doing what he should do, I will have Dev right there looking at him like, hey, waiting for you to slip up. I'm going out there and I might not come out because I've been hungry. I'm that dog that the team needed. They brought me here for a reason. And I already see them by the pictures, Hollywood and Dev, they all tripping out with each other and everything. But that's just Dev's personality. He has a great personality. But I will hopefully, I would love to see him. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't right away. But it's just something to keep an eye on throughout the week and then man i hope dev gets some chances so so we can show them yeah y'all got y'all got clay poo but we got dev so he can do his thing because dev has not dropped the pass every time the ball touches him he gets more than five yards i think he got a first down almost every time he touched the ball or darn near Maybe one time he got the ball and he didn't get a first down, but I had to look up on that. But, man, hopefully they give him some chance to put that dude in the slot. You know what I'm saying? He be, he be in the slot? Nasty. Matter of fact, I just thought about it. I would have Hollywood, Dev in the slot, and then I'd put Dez Bryant on the outside. Because if Dez Bryant out there, they're literally going to give him attention. They ain't going to just have him one-on-one. -on -one. If he's one-on-one, -on -one, the ball's going to get catched because that's his thing. It's like what Jimmy Smith said earlier. If Dez is still covered, he still will catch the ball. He'll catch them 50-50 balls because that's what he's been doing since college. Now, for the defense, we got a fully healthy Brandon Williams back. Calais Campbell. This is for Calais Campbell's first game as a Raven as well, going against the Steelers. Just thought about that. I really haven't seen nobody talk about that. Yannick Ngagwe, first game as a Raven playing the Steelers. PQ! First game as a Raven playing the. Man, this is going to be. I think the defense is going to show out straight up. I think the defense is going to show out. Elliot is starting to pop up everywhere now. I, I, I see it. It's like no matter where the ball at, even if they are a person I really get tackled, you see that 32 somewhere near. This dude is special. Him and Chuck, great, great communication. I see why Chuck was so excited. Other than getting rid of Earl Thomas, but <laughs> Chuck was so excited to get this dude back healthy. He's been playing more games than he played in throughout his career, and he is doing good. He got to catch them interceptions now. That's one thing he has to do. He has to catch them interceptions. He dropped that interception week before last, before the bye week, but 
he's coming along very well. All I've been hearing is just good things about him. Marlon Humphrey was a little uh, ill today, but no virus, thank God. But he's going to be ready. He's going to be ready. Uh, MP Juice, man, oh, you already know he's going to be ready. I can't wait. Well, I, I want to see him and Dez practice against each other. That would be beautiful. Because both of them just dogs. And as well, talking about, uh, speaking about Dez one more time, the one thing I thought about, I didn't mention. Because, you know, I was on the AB train until he kicked us off and it crashed. But after giving it thought, y'all can tell me what you think. Do you believe the Ravens were never interested in Antonio Brown? I only say that because I started thinking how the Raven organization throughout history have what they have done. They always brought in leaders, people that can help other people get better. And Calais Campbell, leader, no problems, get along with everybody. Then even you can go back. Uh, Tony Jefferson was a, a decent leader. Er, Eric Weddle was a, de a a great leader. And they bringing all these dudes in with great leadership. Go to offense. And Quan Bowden, great leader. Steve Smith Sr., dog, as well as Anquan Bowden, great leader. Then you think last year for his offense, who was that great leader? You can't say Ingram. Ingram is a pretty much a hype guy. He keeps everybody energy up. But I didn't see him keep everybody energy up when we was down points. I believe Dez is that prayer. I believe that's what Eric DaCosta was saying. You can see it in Dez's Instagram videos. He is that great leader. Even not being on the NFL team. So there's no showboating. That's just him. He's always been that way. And you think about AB. AB is cold. But I never seen him... For my personal opinion, I never seen him be that great leader with all the teams he's been with. What Pittsburgh? Well, he I would say Vegas Raiders, but that was like a a spec time. The Patriots. So yeah, I never seen him be that leader like Dez Dez has. So that's one thing I believe why they brought him in here. Because from just the practice footage of his first day today, Wednesday, he was already being the leader right off the bat. You can see it in the practice. But back to the defense. Uh, yeah, so I have, I know it's going to be a fumble because Marlon Humphrey always makes someone fumble. And I really do believe MP Juiceman is going to get that pick six. I think he's going to outsmart Ben. I think he's going to outsmart Ben like uh, Ladarius Webb did way back in the day. He outsmart and got that pick six. Man, I still remember that. That was a beautiful thing. So my overall points. I have this game... I have Ravens 33, Pittsburgh 24. 33-24. I still believe we're still going to hit that, that 30 mark. It's only been, I believe, one game we did not hit over 30. Uh, but that's that's where I got us going. So, y'all tell me what you think. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. Once again, hit the subscribe. Show your boy some support. My bad. I'm over here. Hit that subscribe. Show your boy some support. Everybody stay safe. Let's see what Eric DaCosta do. See you next time.